In this video, we will learn about the external and middle ear. So here is the ear. We can see the external, middle, and inner ear. Let us learn about the innervation of the external ear first. So here we have the auricle. There are many nerves innervating the external ear, aspect of the ear, and these are your um, auriculotemporal branch of the mandibular nerve, V3, which is a branch of the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5. The other part are supplied um, by the lesser occipital nerve, from, which originates from the C2 um, spinal cord, and the greater auricular nerve, which is from the C2 and C3 spinal branches. There are also auricular branches of the facial and vagus nerves. Recapping, on the external acoustic meatus, the lateral two-thirds, so the outer two-thirds of the external acoustic meatus is, mainly, car, uh, is ma mainly made up of cartilage or surrounded by cartilage, whereas the medial one-third is bone. The external acoustic meatus does not follow a straight line as, as well, so you must pull the ear a certain way in order to examine the external ear properly. So looking at some clinical relevance here, swimmer's ear, also known as otitis externa, is an inflammation of the external acoustic meatus. Clinical sign is pulling um, the tragus elicits pain. The tragus, what I'm talking about, is this part of the um, auricle. And another important anatomical part of the auricle is the helix here. There is also another condition of the external ear, known as surfer's ear, which, uh, which is where there is a development of bony lumps in the external acoustic meatus. It's not dangerous, but can potentially lead to hearing loss. But surfer's ear is common uh, in, the, in the surfing population, uh, population groups. Okay, so that was for the external ear. Let us now look at the eardrum. This is what you see um, on an otoscope, otos otoscopic view where you are examining the external ear. So on the eardrum, we're going to look at some important uh, parts of the examination. So here is what's known as the cone of light, the umpo, the lateral process of the, mal the malleus, the pars flaccida, and the posterior malleolar folds. So the malleus is important here because it is actually the, uh, the first bony ossicle that articulates with the eardrum. Anyway, the eardrum receives sound vibrations which triggers a cascade of vibrations within the middle ear which then uh, send these vibrational sing signals to the inner ear. Problems such as tympanic membrane perforation, which is a result of many causes, mainly trauma and infection, um, can be a problem in transmitting such processes. But also, it can be very painful. Um, most most uh, tympanic membrane perforation uh, heal spontaneously, but uh, but if it's large, the perforation it would it would require surgery to fix. Okay, now let us concentrate on the middle ear. So again, here is the middle ear. It contains the auditory ossicles, the smallest bones in the body, and remember, the malleus, which is one of the auditory ossicles the bones, articulates with the eardrum. And that's why you can see some uh, projections of the malleus um, on the otoscop otoscopic view. Anyway, the middle ears, um, the bony ossicles of the middle ear, will send vibrations to the inner ear. Um, um, yeah. And here is your pharyngotympanic tube, which will connect to the nasopharynx. And the pharyngotympanic tube is important because it, it sort of uh, equalizes pressure within the middle ear um, and the outside world. In, an important part of the pharyngotympanic tube is that in children is more horizontal and shorter, and thus children are more susceptible to ear infections, or middle ear infections, should I say, that arise from the nose or the mouth, and it can travel up to the middle ear. Anyway, 
Um, inferior to the middle ear, you can find the internal jugular vein. Um, and this will lead us to the next topic, which are the boundaries of the middle ear. So the middle ear, I'm talking about, uh, you know, where the bony ossicles are. So the boundaries that make up the middle ear. And we're going to look at the right middle ear. The inferior wall of the middle ear is also known as a jugular wall or jugular floor because this is where you can find the internal jugular vein run its course. We have the tegmental wall on the top, which is your frontal bone. So it's made up of your frontal bone. The lateral wall, the one most uh, towards the outside, is the membranous wall because this is basically your eardrum. The medial aspect of the wall is the labyrinth, and this is where you can uh, find the inner ear. There are important part uh, structures that make up the labyrinth wall, and these are the oval window and the round window. Also, the prominence of the facial uh, facial canal and the lateral semicircular canal can be found here. The posterior wall is known as the mastoid wall because here is where we find the mastoid bone. On this wall, we can find the mastoid antrum. Now, the mastoid antrum is important because it is relevant to mastoiditis. The mastoid antrum is a cavity uh, continuous with collection of air-filled spaces known as the mastoid cells. Now, infection of the middle ear can spread to these mastoid cells and cause mastoiditis, which is very painful. The anterior wall of the middle ear is known as a carotid wall, and here we can find the pharyngotympanic tube and tensor tympanic muscle run its course. So that was uh, it, I guess, on the middle ear and the external ear. Um, this is a if you haven't watched the other video on the anatomy of the ear overview, please watch that. Thank you.